So we're recording the full screen here to do a demonstration for principles one and the graphic design project number one, and this is to make a postcard with InDesign. When we launch InDesign, we're going to go under the File menu and select New Document. This is intended for print. Number of pages is 2, type of 2. Paper size is letter. Very important that it stays on the letter for the paper even though the frame is going to be smaller. Our orientation will be landscape. Similar to what we talked about in the photo area, we've got portrait and landscape for orientation. Not the subject matter, the orientation. I see our width is set to picas, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We're going to fix that in the next step. So with these things selected, we're going to click on OK. We do have our document. If I zoom out, I can see that it's two pages. Command 0 is going to fit to page. Under the InDesign menu, select Preferences, Units and Increments. We're going to change our measurements to inches for horizontal, vertical inches. Keep the stroke at points. Click on OK. <coughs> now we're going to make a rectangle uh, shape for each of our pages to fall into. It's 9 by 6. When I select the rectangle tool, it's very imprecise and hard to draw exactly a 9 by 6 rectangle. <coughs> click on delete to get rid of that. Instead, if I click just once, I get a dialog box that lets me type in the correct size. 9 tab 6. Click on the OK button. It's not centered, so I want to select the selection tool, grab the edge, and when I move it near the center, I can see I have pink guides that show the center, and when I let go, it will be centered on the page. Now I'm going to place an image into here from our photo project. With the rectangle still selected, go under the File menu, select Place, navigate to the projects and photos that you're using, click on Open. While that's still selected, we want to change our content to not be scaled and cropped, but rather to fit the frame. Under the Object menu, select Fitting and fit the content to the frame. Remember, we want to keep our frame, as the client has specified, at 9 by 6. And there it's scaled and cropped much better. On our first page, we have two other things that we need to add, and that's fonts and the logo. I'm going to click off into the gray space so nothing is selected, and I'm going to place the logo. Go into the File menu, select Place, and navigate towards the VCT student folder. In this dialog box, I can get to it from the Fargo server. Scroll down to VCT student. Student Resources, Multimedia Library, Century Logo and Brand. Select the CC Logo White .eps. It's important that you use the .eps versions of white or black, not the colored versions. Click on OK. <clears throat> it comes with a thumbnail size, but when I click, <clears throat> it's the original large size that I need to scale. Let's zoom out, Command minus, and see the whole page. <clears throat> if I simply drag the corner, it's going to crop my image. I don't want that. Command Z to undo. What I'm going to need is the Command key to scale it and the Shift key to constrain the aspect ratio. Holding down both of those will change it to the right size and I can move it 
on my page to fit the right space. Command 0 to fit to window. Click in the gray space to get a better idea of how it fits. We want to have the size of the capital C as the clear space around the logo. It's a little close here, so I'm just going to move that up and to the left. Click on the gray space to deselect. Now we need some text. Let's select the text tool here and draw a text uh, body shape along the top edge. At this point, it's ready to type. I want to change my font. So up in this corner is the font selection. Let's find something that's bold. 12 points going to be too small. Let's choose 36 from the beginning. Let's double check. I can tell here that I've got black for my fill and zero none for my stroke. That's what I'd like. I'm going to say black is probably not good. I already know I want white. So I'm going to click on this little uh, arrow and select white as my size, or white as my color, rather. Click in the gray area to deselect that. Click back into this shape and type um, reach for your goals. Select that type. I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut here to make that larger, and that is holding Command, Shift, and a greater than sign to incrementally make that larger. That's pretty good. Maybe we want this to be a capital F because it's kind of a headline. <clears throat> Reach for your goals. Click in the gray area to deselect that. Click on the selection tool to select it once. Our assignment says to change this from a font to an outline. Under the Type tool, select Create Outlines. Now it's no longer a font that we can change, but it's outlines that can be moved and manipulated and changed a little bit different than a uh, font can. And we can give it some different effects and things that we might in Photoshop and things like that. Like, let's give this a small drop shadow. Click on OK. That's our first page. Those are the elements for the first page. Nifty keyboard shortcut in Adobe is to hold down the Shift key, or excuse me, the space bar, and I got a little hand and move myself over to page two. This is going to have some text elements. Again, we need to start with the 9 by 6 outline. Click on the rectangle tool. Click once to get the dialog box. It remembers my last setting. Click OK. I need the selection tool to grab the edge and move that directly into the center here. Click in the gray area to deselect. I need a centering line. Click on the line tool. Constrain the aspect ratio by holding down the shift key and draw a perfectly straight line down the center. With that selected, I can double check and see that it's got no fill, a stroke selected, one pixel, solid black. Click on the selection tool and click in the gray space to deselect that. <clears throat> Next thing we need are some uh, text areas. Select the type tool. I need a box for the marketing information, another area for my handwritten message home, a space for the address, and a space for the dingbat, which is going to serve as my postage stamp. And that itself is a font. Let's click back in our marketing section. Let's choose a font that has a serif. And, of course, there's Times New Roman. You may want to select something a little more creative than that. Now let's get like an 18 
And uh, this is the century. Whoops, I got to spell it right. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So you're going to type some more things in there about your photograph. In the next one, we want a handwritten font. I've already downloaded some handwritten fonts. Scroll up to the top. We had always forever. Let's make that larger. Dear mom, send money. All right, please. And we want to use that same, same handwritten font over here for the address. So let's go up to our list of fonts, select, where did it go? Always forever, change the size. Michigan. Okay. So we've got serif font for the marketing message, handwritten font for my message and my address home. Of course, we can select things here, format them according to text, extend them, bold them, change them, uh, all these different ways that we might manipulate fonts. And now we need a dingbat in this one. So let's make something a little bit larger. Find a dingbat font. Uh, scroll down to the bottom. There's wingdings, or you should have uh, downloaded some other fonts. And now we're looking for the letter that we need. A, no, B, no, C, D, E, Okay, so E is pretty good. So we're going to select that, Command, Shift, greater than, to just make that larger within that space. Oh, one too big. Go back. Click in the gray area to deselect it. And those are the elements that we need on the back of our postcard. Have fun. Be creative. Uh, do some cool stuff with your postcard. This might be something that uh, we're going to hang in the display cases for everyone to see. Thanks a lot.